What's going on internet? IG here again with another Linux distro review. Today I'm looking at Uber Student 2.0.4. <laughs> Okay, so this distribution is not the uh, is not the way that it looks out of the box. I've checked this out and I've uh, customized this quite a bit to suit my own needs. And out of the box after a fresh install, this is what Uber Student is going to look like. So yeah, they could probably do a little bit better on the look and feel regard. As you can see, the window borders are you know a bit chunky and the icon set fonts and stuff are a little bit old. By default, this distribution either uses XFCE or the Mate Mate desktop as its default desktops. So you can see by the little mouse up here in the corner that I am using the XFCE version. And uh, for starters, I have uh, put Compiz on top so I can have a few fancy window effects as you can see here. Um, and I've also changed the bottom panel and installed a dock instead. And I've installed uh, Everpad and a few other little applications. But apart from that, it's more or less unchanged. Now, Uber Student's strength is its amount of pre-installed apps and tweaks that are designed for the uh, tertiary level student or, anyone, or anybody really wanting to be productive. So you can see you've got a bucket load of applications and subcategories in the categories of applications. So there's a lot to run through and it's impossible for me to show you absolutely everything. But a lot of these applications are simply links to web apps. For instance, the Kindle stuff in here and you can see Google Public Data Explorer, a few of the budget tools you have, there's a few of the presentation tools that you have. A lot of these are, are simply web apps that you can open uh, through the through the Chrome interface actually I think instead of uh, Fogger or Firefox. So as you can see the applications just go on and on and on and it's uh, like I said it's impossible for me to cover them all but there are some good ones in here that I've noticed such as the lightning calendar nitro tasks, um, auto key which is a really nice um, shortcut creator so that you can create your own keyboard shortcuts. You've got Dropbox pre-installed, a number of dictionaries that are installed at the system level so you can simply highlight and right click to get a definition or to or right click and a certain key combo to, def to get the certain definition from multiple different sources which is nice. And the other thing that I really like about this Uber student distribution is that it gives you a lot of helpful guides, it gives you a lot of tutorials as to how to use the more uh, complicated programs. S for example, like the Lix document processor, I, I mean, I had, a, I had a basic idea of what it can do, but it's good to see that by default they've given you a tutorial that you can work with this and learn how to use Lix as, as, a, as a document processor. Now Lix is a very, very powerful document editor. It's not anything like, it's not anything like LibreOffice Writer or Microsoft Word in that sense of a word processor. It handles documents differently, much more uh, simple and much more streamlined. And the results that you get are pretty gorgeous. But we'll cover that at a different time. You've got the Calibra there for your ebook managing. You've got just a bucket load of applications here. Keepnote, which is a great example of a note-taking application optimized for uh, you know lectures and class examples. And they even roll you in an example here to show you what it's capable of. And you can see it's got you can attach Word documents to it, and then you can take uh, individual notes with highlighting and rich text formatting as you go. You can set due dates, you can set classroom folders in classroom and attach the classroom syllabus. Very, very powerful tool. Now, of course, because of the fact it does have so much stuff pre-installed, it's a fairly weighty download at about 3.6 gigs. But I think if you're a student and you want to have access to the best software that, uh, that is available really on any platform, when it comes to education, then this, this distribution is definitely going to be worth it. Zotero is also a powerful referencing guide that is open source and it's integrated with a, quite a few of the web browsers out there like Firefox and Chrome. And you've also got some programming languages and also Composer installed by default. So if you are going to be doing some compiling or creating web pages, then you're good to go. Although there's not a heap in multimedia, you do have quite a few options here. It's also worth noting that some of the applications, some of the, uh, some of the larger applications aren't necessarily installed by default, but they have nice install buttons here. So for instance, it just runs a quick script to install OpenShot or whatever the application is that you're looking at. You can see here again, we've got a lot of links to uh, cloud music providers here like Google Play, GrooveShark, Pandora, Last.fm, and you've got a link to Hulu Desktop there as well if you're in the States. And we've got Google Music Manager, which is nice. You can upload your tracks to Google Music, of course, if Google Music is available in your country. And then we've got the system settings, which are all broken down into hardware, look and feel, system admin, and internet and network, and then of course XFCE as the desktop manager. 
So by default, this layout is very much GNOME 2. You have uh, you have the top panel with the XFCE uh, applications, places, and system, which is just a quick link to the system settings, which looks like this. And then on the bottom, you have a simple panel managing your windows, and it also a few quick links to things like the trash and your desktop workspace manager. On the panel here, you'll notice there's quite a bit going on, and really by default there, there is. Uh, you can see that Chrome is kind of running in the tray here, running in the background, meaning that every time you pop open a web app or pop open the Chrome web browser itself, it's very, very quick to load. And it loads it on startup so you're not sitting around waiting for, for any of the various web apps to load. You can see that just the amount of stuff that they have under internet is... Uh, is simply staggering. The the golden thing about having these web apps in the menus is that then when you use a keyboard launcher uh, you can easily uh, access those web links. For example we could open up Pixlr, the online uh, image editing and it just opens it up in a nice window here popped up through the through the Google Chrome framework which is really nice. Now when it comes to system resources you can see that I am chugging through about 1.2 gigs of my 8 gig of RAM and uh, and I've got no surprises here I'm le I'm running a lot of stuff in the background and that's why they chose to go with a lighter desktop environment so you definitely are going to have to have a modern machine to to get this uh, distribution up and running but the good thing the good news is that even if you do have a low spec machine they have the uber student uh, light edition which is based on LXDE and has a lot of the background processes stripped out so that it doesn't run as slow and as boggy as what Uber Student has the has the capability to do. Of course, this machine is running far from slow and boggy on my machine at the moment. Applications load in a snap, and you can see here just by you know opening the amount of applications that I've got running here, uh, everything loads very very quickly, and you don't really have any problems as far as speed or responsiveness, regardless of how much stuff is running in the background. Again, the selection of pre-installed apps is second to none when it comes to education. They've, they've installed a lot of stuff from third-party PPAs and stuff that's just difficult to find on the internet, and make it, making it very, very easy for you to be productive straight out of the box here. XFCE is a perfectly decent desktop environment with a lot of customization abilities. As you can see by the example of my desktop here, it certainly isn't the way it looks by default. So if you're the sort of person that likes to be productive or you are studying or need access to the best educational software that the open source world has to offer and also cloud services as well, then definitely give Uber Student a go because they've done so much work here to get it capable of handling every single task that you could possibly throw at it as a scholarly or productive type. So they really deserve some major props. Again, they probably could make it a little bit slimmer as far as how many background processes are running by default because like I said, 1.2 gigs is uh, of RAM usage is pretty bulky. But apart from that, it's been very, very stable. I haven't had any application crashes, and you can see just by loading up a ton of applications that I have here on my dock, nothing really slows it down too much. So let me know what you think of Uber Student in the comments below. And of course, give me your, your favorite productive apps in the comment section below or on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you like this, these videos on a regular basis. And I shall see you all in the very near future. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.